Hey guys, welcome to the fifth episode on a playlist that I am doing about the guitar kit world ES-175 kit. Now I bought a kit, uh, I did an episode about, we opened it up, I talked a little bit about why I got into kits, or why I'm trying them out over the arch tops I typically rescue and fix up. Then we did one about what kind of finishing it took uh, sanding and and, and uh, shaping and all that kind of thing. Uh, we did one about actually putting a finish on it that had Mississippi clay and Mississippi river water on it. We glued the neck on it. Anyway, all of those episodes are in a playlist right up there right about now. There's an eye popping up and a message. So click on that. If you're seeing this episode first, you definitely want to watch and build up to where we're at. But now... We're in the fifth episode. We've got the thing together. The neck is on. Remember the last one. It ain't going nowhere. I can play baseball with this thing. I think I could rake leaves with it, maybe dig some flowers into the flower bed. But we're at a point right now that a lot of people never get to. I am known for my guitars being durable. This one is durable, I can tell you that. But my guitars are unique. So this episode is about taking this thing and doing what I usually do to it. Now you've seen me throughout the episode do a few things. There are some giveaways. You see some scrap metal on here. You see a place up here, a round spot. You see three round spots in the back, a round spot here. And so before we put the hardware on it that's going to make it play, we're going to dress this thing up. And I've got a pile of junk here. I've got some matchbooks, I've got some scrap metal, I've got some pieces of wood. You're not going to believe where these pieces of wood come from. i got some coins, and um, I'm going to make this thing really unique. So what we're going to do is, you're going to see me working on the guitar um, as I do this stuff. You're going to see me putting this stuff on. We're going to listen to some music from... Wendy Jean Garrison, Wendy Jean Garrison, there's a link below to her music. You're going to want to order her music because, um, like I said, you're going to see me putting pieces and bits and, and, and doing what I do to this thing, and you're going to wonder, what is he doing? And then at the end of it, after we enjoy Wendy Jean Garrison's music, we'll stop and we'll go through this thing, and I'm going to give you some history, and you are not going to believe what's on here. So... Let's get to the bench and um, sit back, relax, watch what I'm doing, and listen to Wendy Jean. Let's go.
All right, guys, we are wrapping up this episode here about all this scrap rattus I put on here. You know, when you put half of a yard sale on a guitar, there's some stuff that's going to have to be lined up at the end with the hardware, like this Cullahoma Mississippi license plate pit guard that we're going to trade out for what was in the kit. I'm putting everything together that was in the kit. We're building the kit, but... um. Except this, this is the the only thing. Anyway, let's get this thing up on the bench and go over what I've done to it. And then we can move on to putting the hardware on it and wiring it up and seeing what it sounds like. Okay, let's start at the back. I'm going to give you kind of an up and down here and show you what's going on, what we put on in this episode. Of course... Tammy signs all my guitars. That's what it says right up there. Let's zoom in a little bit. And I'm going to hold up some books and some things like that. They're going to kind of help you see what's going on here. Let's get that triangle of wood right there. There's a piece of wood right up there. There's one there. And there's one there. So what's going on here is this piece of wood came from the grounds of the Paramount Record Company in Grafton, Wisconsin, where Sunhouse recorded in 1930 with Charlie Patton. That came from there. This one came from Reuben Lacey's uh, church in Ridgecrest, behind the church there in Ridgecrest, on Mono Street in Ridgecrest. And then uh, this piece of wood came from the place where Alan Wilson died. Now, anybody that knows blues history knows that Sun House was preaching. He heard Reuben Lacey singing the blues and playing slide or something, and he was preaching about how this was the devil's music, and then Reuben Lacey basically ended up leaving town. Sun House ended up in the same barrel house and blues things that Reuben Lacey was doing. Reuben Lacey became the preacher. And, of course, when Sun House was discovered, some of the people that interviewed him were David Evans and um, Alan Wilson was there, John Fahey was there, and they found out from Sun House that Reuben Lacey had become a preacher. They tracked him down and went to Ridgecrest. There's pictures of them there with Reverend Reuben Lacey. I got a rubbing of the cornerstone of Reuben Lacey's church that was uh, dedicated uh on October 25th, 1964. And then about the time that they discovered Sun House, Alan Wilson, through uh, his roommate Bob Height on the Canned Heat Band, had a great deal, a big collection of blues records. And so Alan Wilson was actually brought in to help Sun House uh, relearn some of his music. So the story there kind of goes back to this is a really, really good book about Sun House preaching the blues. You know what? Let me zoom out here a little bit while we're here so you can see what I'm showing you. Preaching the Blues, Daniel Beaumont, great book. If you want to know what happened up in Ridgecrest when they went to find Reuben Lacey, Nothing But the Blues has a reprint of David Evans' um, interview uh, with John Fahey and Alan Wilson um, of Reuben Lacey. That's that story. So um, let's see what we can do now. We'll zoom back down here. Let's see if we can zoom in. There we go. There's a nickel right there. Um, it's from 1927. That's the year of the Mississippi River flood. Um, you hear Memphis Mini when the levee breaks. That, that's just not a blues song. That's the reality of what was happening. Um, and it was scary. Basically, they blew up some levees to protect some areas at the expense of some people. Anyway, that's some of what's going on on the back. So um, I really like the way... This Mississippi clay mud and Mississippi river water and a few other chemicals came together to make that color stand out the way it is. Let's flip this around now. All right, we haven't put the hardware on this thing. We've rough fitted some of this stuff, but 
Um, let's start up at the top, and I'll see if I can't zoom in again. Um, there is actually a coin right up there in that circle right up there from, believe it or not, Parchman Penitentiary. Now, Parchman Penitentiary was a terrible place. Bear with me. i got to zoom back out. i got to keep showing you stuff. There's books and stuff here you're going to want to read if you're into this. But this book by David M. Oshinsky, Worse Than Slavery, is about Parchman Farm. Now, what they would do is about the time it came to pick crops, and we're talking about cotton, you might be walking down the street and uh, you would have somebody pick you up for vagrancy or pin some crime on you or something. You'd be, end up on, in, on this farm and you would be picking somebody else's crop for no money uh, under the pretense of you being imprisoned. And um, once mysteriously, once the crops were all picked, then they didn't need you anymore. It's just horrendous. Again, good book if you really want to understand what happened. Worse than slavery, Parchment Farm, and the ordeal of Jim Crow justice. Um, you'll find that some of these people that we talk about on the channel did some time there, and I don't know if they actually committed any crimes. It's horrendous. So um, we've got some matchbooks here. We've got some Holly Springs stuff. We've got a 1967 Chevy dealer out of Vicksburg, Mississippi. And the whole thing there is another great book, George Mitchell, Mississippi Hill Country Blues, 1967. That's Mississippi Joe Calcott playing guitar there on the front porch. This is a great book. Him and his wife Kathy went down as college students in 1967 and recorded a bunch of people and took some pictures. And then, of course, we've got some scrap metal here in this Coahoma, Mississippi license plate's been cut up into a pit guard. So, there it is. I'm pretty happy with the way it's turning out. It's very colorful. And there is a lot of physical history in here. All right, guys, that is it for this episode. I think you can see that I'm really, really into this to the point where I've got a network of people that will go out and, and find me mud and dirt and sticks and pieces of coins and, and uh, whatever. I try to make my guitars... Like when you pick up something, one of my guitars, you are literally picking up pieces of blues history. And I, I like that. Um, I kind of think that's what's really motivating me, not just pinning scrap metal on anything. Um, the camera work sucked, I know that. But um, let's go over a couple of these books I was telling you about. Uh, George Mitchell's 1967 Hill Cunt, Mississippi Hill Country Blues, um, this is a great book. You really want this one. George is still around. Um, get a hold of him. Find his website. You know what? I'm going to give you a link below to some of these books in the resources section so you can find it. Um, this book right here will open your eyes to literally, there was a time in this country where you could be walking down the street. You know, we talk about profiling and stuff like that. You would be walking down the street, and just because you looked like somebody or something that somebody else didn't care for, you would be picked off the street. Nobody knew what happened to you. You're in prison. You have no recourse, no due process. You're in prison. You're picking other people's crops for free, and then you're just out on the street, and that record follows you forever. I don't know what to say about that, but you, you, you can't be ignorant about this. Worse Than Slavery, David M. Oshinsky. You want to get that one. Um, I'm into Sun House a ton. Let me get these books out of the way. I didn't get set up very good here. But sometimes blues books turn into somebody's dream and a lot of loose interpretation and stuff. I would say that Daniel Beaumont's book, Preaching the Blues about Sun House, is a great book. It, it, it doesn't turn it into a novel of what my perception of life is. Um, David Evans, if you don't know who blues historian David Evans is, you want to find out because he is the scholar of the group that actually takes a look at uh, how all these things tied together 
written a ton of stuff. Um, it's pretty, the, the reading is collegiate level stuff, but you're going to learn a lot about different people. Gets into the details of life. Not a bunch of rhetoric, just fact. And um, this book, Nothing But the Blues, is a compendium of articles that appeared. But in here is the interview that he had uh, with John Fahey and um, Alan Wilson with Reverend Reuben Lacey. I've been to that church. I've been inside of that church. Tammy has played a resonator guitar inside of that church. If I can tell you about an album that is going to help you understand Sun House and um, this dichotomy he had between being a preacher and Barrow House and then playing the blues, Sun House live at Oberlin College, April 15th, 1965. I think this was a record uh, day release, but there's music on here. He was just coming back. This is about ooh, a year after they found him in Rochester, New York. Um, and he was on a college tour and a coffee house tour um, playing for people. And he talks a lot on this one, so get this one. Okay, so back to this guitar. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to put the pickups and the wiring in it and get ready to play. I'm making arrangements to meet up with somebody that you all will know. Anybody that knows blues uh, at all is going to know this person. We're going to string this up, get the, get the strings up high, and uh, tune it to open G and put a slide on somebody's finger and see what it'll do. So look for that episode next. I've got everything into a playlist. If you're seeing this episode first, you got to start at the beginning. Playlist up there on the Mississippi Mudslide Junk Pile Guitar. I will see you when we start uh, putting the parts on and firing up the soldering iron. Give me a like, subscribe if you have it, and I'll see you next time.